Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to explore different angle and arc relationships and define different types of uh, angles that we will use working with circles. And I'm going to divide these into three different categories. We're going to look at angle and arc relationships when the vertex of our angle is inside the circle. And then we're going to look at angle and arc names and relationships when the vertex is on the circle. And we'll also explore angle and arc relationships and do some defining of vocabulary when the vertex is outside the circle. So let's begin with the vertex inside the circle. So if the vertex is at the center of the circle, so this would be circle O, we would refer to our angle as a central angle. So angle AOB would be a central angle. And its angle measure would be the same as its intercepted arc. In this case, it would be arc AB. So if arc AB is 57 degrees, then we know angle AOB is also going to be 57 degrees. The second type of angle and arc relationship we have inside when the vertex is inside the circle is a chord-chord angle. And a chord-chord angle is formed when two chords intersect and neither of them passes through the center of the circle. In a chord-chord angle, the angle measure will equal one half of the sum of its two intercepted arcs. So the intercepted arcs would be the intercepted arcs of the angle and its vertical angle. So in this case, our, if we're working with angle DX, S, or the angle that I've marked here, we'll use arc DS and arc HA. Those are the two intercepted arcs. So if arc DS is 56 degrees and arc HA is 38 degrees, then angle DXS, as would angle HXA, would equal one half of the 56 plus 38. So one half of 94 equals 47 degrees. So angle DXS would equal 47 degrees. So then our vertical angle would equal 47 degrees, and then we'd know our supplement. Next, we have the vertex on the circle. <clears throat> and if the vertex is on the circle, we can have two different angles. Angle GPG would be an inscribed angle. So angle GP. Oh, I have two P's in there. Let's call it GPQ. So angle GPQ would be an inscribed angle. And the angle equals one half of its intercepted arc. So if the arc is 42 degrees, then angle P would equal 21. The next type of angle we would have would be a tangent chord angle where WX is a tangent, we have a tangent point here at X, and our chord YX. But again, our angle measure would equal one half of its intercepted arc. Our intercepted arc here is YX, but it would be this minor arc YX, or um, add another letter, we'd have one half of arc y z x that is our intercepted arc so i could give you the angle measure of 75 so then 75 would equal one half of arc y z x 
So multiply both sides by 2, and then we know that arc is 150 degrees. And then finally, the vertex can be outside the circle. So when the vertex is outside the circle, that could be formed by two secants. So angle H here would be a secant, secant angle where we have secant HM and secant HX. And our formula here is the angle measure. Angle H will equal one half the major arc or the larger arc minus the minor arc or the smaller arc. Okay, so the major minus the minor, and it does make sense that the, the major arc would be further away. That would be that larger arc because that angle is going to open up for wider, further away it is from the vertex, the wider that angle is going to be going to be, it's going to grab a, a, a larger arc. So if my major arc, say, is 140 degrees, and my minor arc is only, say, 20 degrees, then angle H would equal one half of 140 minus 20. So angle H would have to equal one half of 120 and angle H would equal 60 degrees. So that's how we would do that. Algebra and show that work. Another example of a vertex outside the circle, we might have a tangent chord angle where HA is a tangent and DH is the secant. I misspoke if I said tangent chord. This is a tangent secant my secant HD. But our formula is the same. It's still going to be one half of the big arc or the major arc minus the minor arc. So in an example like this, we could solve for one of our arcs. If I give you angle H is 70 degrees. So now we'd say 70 equals one half of x minus 150, because it's the bigger arc minus the smaller arc. We're going to take arc DA and subtract arc SA. So it would be arc DA minus arc SA, the major arc minus the minor arc. Well, Instead of distributing the two, I'm going to multiply both sides by two. I'm going to say 140 equals x minus 150. And add 150 to both sides. And 290 degrees equals x. So now I know that arc DA equals 100, or pardon me, 290. And then finally, we have a tangent-tangent angle or a two-tangent angle. So angle A here would be our two-tangent angle. It's formed by tangent AN and tangent AT. So one thing about a two-tangent angle, the major arc plus the minor arc will equal, in this case, the major plus the minor will equal 360. It's going to be one full revolution all the way around the circle. So my sample problem here, when I said that was x and that was 200 and my angle was 20, well, it's really easy to, to solve for this. This is 160 degrees because it's the rest of the way around the circle. But, just to show you, 20 equals 1 half of 200 minus x. Multiply both sides by 2. So I get 40 equals 200 minus x. And subtract 200 from both sides. And 
and I get negative 160 equals negative x, and x equals 160, and look at how that works out. One thing that's interesting, though, is with a two-tangent angle and its intercepted minor r, these two will always be supplements. So a two-tangent angle and its intercepted minor r will always be supplements. So that is worth um, committing to memory and knowing that will make your life a little bit easier. So a real quick summary, if the vertex is outside the circle, the angle measure equals one half the major arc minus the minor arc. So it doesn't really matter if it's a secant secant or a tangent tangent or a tangent secant or secant tangent. It doesn't really matter. It's one half of the big arc minus the small arc. The formula is the same. And if the vertex is on the circle, again, the formula is the same. It, the angle is equal to one half of its intercepted arc. And if the vertex is inside the circle, it's either, either a central angle. That's the easy one. That's a one-to-one -one relationship. The angle equals the arc. And if it's a chord-chord angle, the angle measure equals one half the sum of the two arcs. And how I remember that is when two chords intersect, they intersect, but they make something that looks like a plus sign. So we have our, if you're willing to be a little bit creative here and imaginative, you can see how our chords intersect and make a plus sign. So we are going to add our two intercepted arcs and then take half of that sum. So that's how I remember to add versus subtract the two arcs. So there's my helpful hint for the day, and we'll get some more practice with this when I see you in class.